Maybe you could tell us a little bit about what it's been like for you these last five years uh, in the face of uh, how the story has been told and what your impressions are of what happened here on that morning. Well, um, I've gone through a process of uh, kind of evolving clarity. Uh, like a lot of people there, we were traumatized by the events of 9-11. I was asked, I'm a priest, I was asked to do last rites um, at Ground Zero, so I was there for a couple of nights. Um, slowly, I began to become skeptical um, regarding the story that was being put forth about the perpetrators of the crime and so on. Um, particularly so because when I was at Ground Zero for that period when, during uh, performing last rites for people, struck with the awesome, uh, horrific uh, reality of searching for body parts um, and the fact that there was very little debris. I remember querying among some of the fire people and first responders there saying what happened to all the debris and everything was so pulverized and so on but I was not aware then um, what I've come to learn now that it's quite likely that those buildings were brought down through some kind of controlled demolition um, as separate and distinct from the, uh, the jet fuel most of which burned off upon impact in, in, in terms of the planes. Um, and so that, that was something that struck me then as, as odd and I've come to learn about it. So essentially what I'm saying is that what my experience over the last five years has been a growing awareness, along with a lot of other people, as to what really happened on 9-11. Um, a friend of mine who's a psychologist said that the, the, that process is also a time that people may have moved from uh, a, 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 a flight instinct to a fight instinct, where we, you know, you become uh, your your brain gets switched off, or your critical faculties maybe get switched off. It's some kind of biological response. Um, but as we've grown in awareness, um, and, a, and a truth movement has evolved around the country, around 9/11, uh, reading books and looking at films and discussing things and seeing the response of the government, uh, the the um, unwillingness of the Bush administration, for for example, to to adhere to the desires of the family, families to even have an investigation. It took them some 440 days before they got around to, you know, kicking and, and, and dragging their feet um, to have an investigation. That I've come to the point now where I really do believe that we need to have uh, an investigation that, that's independent, that has some subpoena power, has teeth, and really gets to the bottom of it because there are too many questions. Um, I could sit here and speculate um, and say, hey, it looks to me like some kind of an inside job. Um, complicity on the part of uh, our government, or more specifically, complicity on the part of certain um, officials within the Department of Defense, the Pentagon, the intelligence community, etc. cetera. Um, but really, I'm not a prosecutor, I'm not a scientist. But do I feel there's a need for a new investigation based on what I've seen and what I've read and the critical uh, um, thinking that I've done on this subject, I would say most definitely yes. And I think the growing majority of people in this country now, um, uh, from diverse ideological points of view and so on, are saying the same thing. And I think that's really where we're at at this point. And I think it, I didn't necessarily feel that way with you in those 26 days afterward. I was still sort of stunned and shocked. And we've come to that over five years. But you're a New Yorker saying this. And there are very few, I think, New Yorkers, despite the fact that they're very unhappy with the Bush doctrine that has led from this. And so I think it's important to hear from someone like yourself, who is relatively well known around here, uh, speaking in, in these ways. Do you find that New Yorkers uh, are taking that attitude of, I don't want to look at it, I don't want to know about it, I want to put it past me, whether or not uh, these things uh, these problems exist, or are you finding that there is a growing number of people well, who are taking... Think, I think at this point the majority of people in New York, I think recent polls have shown that um, statewide upwards of 60 percent of people uh, doubt the official story. I think at this point we're looking at um, Time Magazine this week said that, um, and I'm, I'm pretty close to a, a quote here, that uh, what began as a fringe movement has now assumed proportions of, uh, of, a, of a, a major political uh, tendency. It's a political reality in America that people do not believe the official story, and it's just a question of what kinds of vehicles we can construct to, uh, to deconstruct the lie uh, and bring those people to, uh, to justice. I mean, our own FBI 
if one goes to the FBI's most wanted list and looks up uh, Osama bin Laden, admits that it has no evidence linking bin Laden and al-Qaeda to the crimes of 9-11. This is our own FBI. Um, so they were pressed just recently in spring, and they still say they don't right. have an effect. So if we don't know who, if, if we know that it, we're not, we're, the FBI is saying it's not bin Laden and al-Qaeda, um, well, who perpetrated this crime? This, this crime remains unsolved. So all we're saying is that we want this crime solved, and we want the, uh, the, the, the top investigators and prosecutors who are honest, who are not wed to the Republicans or the Democrats for that matter, who are independent, to get to the bottom of this crime and bring those people who are guilty to justice uh, in, you know, through indictments. Today, the breaking news today is that uh, Congressman uh, uh, Nidia Velasquez uh, from our own district has put forth a bill seeking the indictment of Christy Todd Whitman around the... Uh, the, you know, this, the, the horrific uh, horrific cloud of dust, which right. she said we were all safe from at the time, right. uh, in a terrifying way. I mean, with the, just off the off the cuff, we were told that we would we would you know there was nothing to fear from this cloud, which later even not UC a, Davis. And not only that, but Christy Todd Whitman was was following a directive that was issued by President Bush. It was an executive order um, re, re, in relation to her being able to make that claim. So this indictment is, I'm not a lawyer, but as far as I can see, if this indictment comes down, it will implicate President Bush, who issued an executive order to Christy Todd Whitman so that she was forced to carry it out. Christy Todd Whitman is just a, a, a patsy, in a sense, in all of this. Um, I think that's why she resigned from the EPA and so on. I don't know her, but I'm, I'm suggesting that the executive order that comes from Bush, who in his, in, in his own right, um, is is stand, is fronting for some others who are in the shadows. Um, it, it's also part of that. Frank so, Morales, just very quickly, if you could speak very directly to Elliot Spitzer or to the DA's office uh, right now in in uh, stern terms, what would you say? I'd say Elliot Spitzer should should have initiated an investigation. He is our our number one lawman in New York City, but I understand why he did not, um, insofar as he disallowed his own deputy assistant. Uh, Mr. Schnell to testify to uh, Kurt Weldon's committee around the able danger situation, the, the hearings that were happening in Washington. So, I mean, I could I could demand that Mr. Spitzer get on the, get on the the case and do his job um, as uh, as Attorney General and investigate this crime, a local crime in New York City. And I hope that he will still consider doing that. But I understand why he would not, because he too seems complicitous. Um, in the cover-up in any case. Well, then Best the Avenue, Best Avenue for our, us to pursue? The Best Avenue at this point is for the people to, uh, to make their voices known, to create a critical mass of power, and to use the, uh, the imagination uh, and the resourcefulness of the, of the people, not only in America but around the world, to create uh, the means of this investigation, whether it assumes an international character, whether it assumes a, a traditional grand jury uh, character. I don't know, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm very confident there are people who are intelligent, who are capable, who are still capable of critical thought, who are not uh, you know, uh, um, bewildered by the irrational uh, uh, discourse that emanates from the White House and from the major media, and who we will get the kind of investigation that will, that will create a context for real uh, 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 justice, um, and we will get to the bottom of this crime and, and, uh, and, and, and deal in truth with the hurt and the pain of the, of the victims. Because we can't really ever have closure until we have justice in terms of the perpetrators of this crime. My name is Judy Cunningham. I live in Westchester. And uh, tell me, uh, were you in Westchester on September 11th of 2001? I was about six blocks uh, north of the towers when it went on. And I was able to get down close to the towers about a couple, uh, an hour later or so. When were, were you frightened that day? I just felt numb. I wouldn't say I was frightened. I went in to see what was going on and how I could help. I, I served in the Army, and uh, I've, been, I've seen various things in the Army, so I wasn't frightened. I wouldn't say that. I was just shocked, and I was numb. The main thing that was on my mind was there could be 50,000 dead people inside of the world. I, I, and it's recently dead people inside of those towers. I didn't know they had been evacuated beforehand. I know that there's a conference here. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about your relationship to the conference and things that you've been discussing today. Well, I'm a member of 9-11 Truth. I'm on the steering committee. I do a lot of writing. Uh, I do writing for 9-11 Truth. Here's one paper I wrote on the background of 9-11, what happened, and um, scientific evidence that 
the towers came down by controlled demolition and that no plane hit the Pentagon and that how all of this leads into uh, the establishment of a totalitarian government that the back the basis the reason for the uh, government conspiring with to bring down the world trade towers with controlled demolition was to make people believe there was terror so they could establish the Patriot Act and take rights away from people that was the basis to enter the war in Iraq to take over the oil of the Middle East so they can control oil prices and control the world's oil and to conquer Afghanistan for which they needed a pipeline to bring oil down from the oil rich countries north of Afghanistan and for the opium drugs that the CIA controls in Afghanistan and basically to dominate the world. And have you felt uh, from the very earliest days that uh, the explanation for those events uh, has been problematic to you or is it something that you sort of came to over time? Well. At the Republican National Convention, I met the 9-11 Truth people. And like almost everybody, when I, they first started saying that the government was responsible for the World Trade Towers, and they came down by controlled demolition, I said, you're crazy. And I said, why would... But I went to one of their meetings anyway. And at the meeting, I said, why would they do that? And they said, for defense contracts. And it all, de it all dawned on me. It's true. It's true. And they gave the scientific evidence that the World Trade Towers came down at the speed of gravity, there is no resistance. And I have 14 years of college in science, and it dawned on me. Those tires came down in 11 seconds, which wouldn't even leave you know one second per floor of resistance when they came down. Do you find that in, those, in the time that you've been contemplating these ideas, that when you go to talk to people about it, they're very resistant to that idea because they've become convinced uh, that this is caused by fuel from the planes and so on? Or are you finding that if you get time to talk to people, they kind of slowly come around, or are they afraid to talk about these things? Well, right at this point right now, about half the people you talk to say they've already heard about it and they're already convinced and they believe it's the government. But there are a lot of people who are shocked and say, no, no. I think it's like the, the stages of grief that, you know, you, f you figure out your government is working against you, the government is conquering the world and subjugating the people, and, it's, and it's, the Constitution has been destroyed, and this a uh, fraudulent government that got in by fraudulent elections has taken over. They're like in shock and disbelief going, no, no, they didn't do it. They couldn't have. And a lot of people deny it, but a lot of people come over once you explain it to them. And a lot what, of people what avenues? crazy. I think that's part of this denial syndrome. It's just the first stage of grief. Thanks for joining us. One last thing I just want to ask you. It's been so long. And is there ever a time when you think you can get closure to this and feel like you can put this down? Or now that it's awakened you, do you think this is something we're going to be doing or you're going to be doing for a very long time? Uh, there's going to be a lot of, a lot of grief and post-traumatic stress and harm from this that can never be undone. For one thing, the mothers that have lost sons in Iraq, the people that have lost their loved ones in the World Trade Center, people who have gone through losing taxes on their homes through job outsourcing. There's a tremendous amount of damage done by this Bush administration, most of it leading back to the World Trade Towers. Most of it leading back to the World Trade Towers. And uh, I'm hoping someday that there can be peace again and prosperity and jobs and, and restoring the government of the people, by the people, and for the people, and not letting the U.S. Constitution perish. And it's glorious, inalienable rights for everybody, and not just this ruling class that's supposedly taken over by fraud and sub subterfuge against the American people and the world. I'm hoping that we'll be restored, but there's always going to be a lot of grief left over from this that will never go away. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, I'm joined now by Bob Bowman, who is a candidate. Which district is that? Uh, Florida District 15, and just a couple of days ago I won my primary. And can you tell us a little bit about how that is going for you and how much, uh, say, 9-11 truth, if you will, uh, plays a role in what it is that uh, you're doing with your campaign? Well, it's playing a big role. And uh, people, some of them tell me I won my primary in spite of my position on 9-11. And I say, no, I think uh, I won my primary in large measure because of 9-11. People are starting to wise up. And uh, I know you were in the service. Uh, could you tell us all uh, uh, in what capacity you served this country? Uh, I'm a retired lieutenant colonel, United States Air Force. I flew 101 combat missions in Vietnam, directed all the Star Wars programs under Presidents Ford and Carter. Maybe tell us a little bit about how this has uh, built up for you. Yeah. Well, I was skeptical from the beginning because there weren't uh, any interceptors up there. And I'm an old interceptor pilot, and I expected to see them up there 
uh, they could have intercepted those planes long before they reached their targets if they had been notified in time. And then, of course, the things about coming out with all of their names and pictures and finding passports on the street. I mean, the whole thing looks fishy to me. And uh, where do you think the priorities lie for this movement? That is to say, uh, where do you think the, the, the most important steps are next? Uh, do you think that there is a criminal justice path here that we could take? Or uh, what, what do you advocate? Well, the important thing is that we get a new investigation so that whoever was responsible is deterred from trying a new 9-11 as an excuse for war against Iran. We simply cannot survive another go around of this. The military is depleted. Our budget is depleted. We have to save this country. We're losing our freedoms. We can't stand another 9-11. We have to get the people who are responsible. I'm pursuing it through the Congress. Other people are taking other avenues, but I want the Congress to get involved. On the fifth anniversary here, uh, what would you say to people in this country uh, who are confused, actually, and they're seeing the numbers grow of people who are joining the 9-11 Truth Movement, but perhaps they're not as informed as they are, and they've been listening for so long to this hypnotic message that has come uh, from their government about what happened that day. Well, we know 9-11 was a conspiracy. The only question is, who were the conspirators? The government says it was 19 Arabs with box cutters. Some of us aren't so sure. But you don't have to believe in, a, in a, some wild conspiracy theory to call for a new independent investigation. We need that because there has been no responsibility laid, no accountability. We don't know who was responsible. Even if the government story is correct, we need to know who dropped the ball. And if elected, uh, you plan to do this in Congress? I'm doing it tomorrow, even before I'm elected. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. My name is Alfonso Shusky, and I'm with Veterans for 9-11 Truth. Uh, our whole purpose and uh, reason for being is to investigate. We, we want to investigate our government for participation in 9-11. Uh, we uh, take a solemn oath to defend the Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. Uh, so it's our duty uh, to, uh, to investigate, and then if we find that these folks are guilty of the crimes in 9-11, then we feel that we should arrest them. We're to defend the Constitution, regardless of who violates it. You know, in other words, if there was a coup d'etat in this country, like there is right now, uh, it would be incumbent upon veterans and active duty people to stop it from happening. Can I ask you, uh, you were a member of which service? I was an uh, Army. And did you serve abroad? Yeah, Vietnam, war veteran. And do you co-founded this group when? on May 15th, uh, 2006. So this is a new group? It's brand new. Do you find that there are a lot of people in your organization who I'm assuming have military experience who seem to think that the events of that day uh, show or belie intuitively uh, a kind of uh, involvement by U.S. American military? I think that somebody with military experience was involved in, uh, in the explosions. Building 7, uh, free fall collapsed, Free fall collapse with no resistance whatsoever at the same rate of speed that you would expect if you drop something in a vacuum. The only way to, to accomplish the symmetrical free fall collapse is to make all the steel in the building lose all its strength all at once. Fires can't do that. The building was not hit by any airplanes. The only way known to man to do that is with some kind of exotic cutter charges like a thermite, thermate, something like that. So, uh, yeah, is there military involved? There was certainly military involved in the stand down in NORAD. They did not, I repeat, they did not abide by the well-established FAA protocol for air emergencies. They just didn't get it done. Uh, are, you, are there a lot of members uh, in your group yet? Uh, what's your size? 300. Veterans from all around the country? or All around the country, even all around the world. Just about every rank from uh, colonel all the way down to uh, private, some active duty military as well. You know, it's a crime to commit treason, you know, to murder your own citizens, uh, to create pretexts for invasions, illegal invasions of uh, countries like Afghanistan and Iraq. Those are all treasonous acts that violate not just international law, but U.S. law. And being in the military or being a veteran, you have a solemn duty uh, to resist 
or even arrest the people who are giving illegal orders based upon uh, usurpation of power by means of a false flag operation. And can you say a few words uh, about, I assume you stand behind uh, him, Lieutenant Watada and his uh, current struggle? Yes, absolutely. That's what I uh, am telling our military to do is lay down their arms. Don't take orders. Resist, 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 and if possible, arrest the criminals. And tell me, uh, please, uh, do you have a website and where can people learn more about your group? Yep, it's Veterans for 9-11 Truth. Our website is quite simple. It's V911T. That's Victor 911 Tango for the military people dot org. Yep, it's full of information about 9-11 and it's all factual and can be verified in public record. We're, we don't have to theorize or make things up. There's plenty of facts uh, to support uh, the things that we believe are true and that's all we need. We don't have any theories. And in the five years uh, that you've been looking into this material, uh, would you say that, um, I mean, we had the 9-11 Commission, which clearly seems to be problematic for a lot of people for what it left out and how much it didn't do to cover this material. Do you feel that the numbers are growing of people who are concerned about this? Or do you think that you that a lot of people feel like, you know, why, why are we doing this? It's five years later. Uh, why can't we just let this go? Uh, which of those do you see? Maybe you could talk a little bit about that. What what I decided to do, since I knew on 9/12, I I knew that there was a that it was an inside job and that Nora was stood down and they did not abide by FAA protocol. So I thought, now what do I do? Well, I've got to shout this truth out. I've got to tell people, and if enough people know about the truth, then you reach what I would call a critical mass, where you're an oddball if you don't believe the truth about 9-11. And that's the point we're reaching now, according to a recent Zogby poll, uh, 70 million American adults want to uh, have a, a new investigation. That's 44% of the adult pop population. That's strong. And we did this, this projection or proliferation of the truth by means of grassroots organizing via the internet. You know, we have the internet, so we communicated with each other. We got other people to take a look at the evidence, and it's growing very, very fast now. Uh, I think that we've reached critical mass. It's getting bigger and bigger. You have uh, organizations like Scholars for 9-11 Truth getting on C-SPAN, getting on mainstream MSN, uh, and so forth. I've been on a lot of radio shows. I have my own radio show, too. That's one of the things I created in an effort to uh, you know, to offset this great big horrendous lie with the truth. And we plan to shout out the truth until the truth becomes the truth. And is there a priority then a criminal pathway to justice, like a grand jury or? Yes, yes. I'd like to see it treated as a crime, investigated as a crime. And I would like the investigators to be outside of the government. Because you see here, the government's the suspect. And you can't have the suspect investigating their own crimes which is what the 9-11 Commission has done. Uh, and they all had conflicts of interest. I won't go into the details of them, but they were all associated with uh, beneficiaries of the war in Afghanistan and Iraq. And they have to be a, a panel that's, that, whose interests are not conflicted, uh, that, uh, that have nothing but justice and truth in mind, not politics. We don't want to politicize like the 9-11 Commission was. I mean, the 9-11 Commission actually believed that uh, high-ranking NORAD officials were lying to them and turned this, this information over to the Department of Justice. And what did they do? Nothing. That's what we don't want. That's what we don't want. That's why we don't want the government doing it, because they will do nothing. Because they don't want to, that, of course they don't want, I mean, these are, these are high crimes. And they're not just misdemeanors. This is treason. These things could be penalized with uh, firing squad hanging or something like that which is what I'd like to see. I want these folks to be caught, to be prosecuted, found guilty, and then made an example of so that future executive officers in our government abide by our laws. My name is Marcy J. Gordon. I'm from right here in Manhattan. I, in fact, I live three quarters of a mile from ground zero when it happened and still live in that neighborhood. And so you were a witness there? Uh, well, I watched it on TV, but felt the ground. I mean, the neighborhood looked like a volcano exploded. A friend of mine was working at 100 Church Street, and, and they weren't allowed to go anywhere. And he was calling me because he was so upset about witnessing people jumping out of the windows on fire. So, yeah, it impacted me. There were, I think, eight people from my local um, fire, you know, firefighters, engine and ladder company, 
that were killed because they were the, one of the very first groups on the scene. Were you skeptical from the very beginning of uh, government uh, explanations and uh, descriptions of things that were happening, or is this something that you have come to after some time, uh, some of the ideas that were presented here today, for example? I knew right away. Um, in fact, as we watched it, I looked at my husband and I said, that's a controlled demolition. Those airplanes didn't bring down those buildings. And a friend of mine, an activist friend of mine, called me on September 11th to see if I was okay, and he said, it's the burning of the Reichstag. I said, you're exactly right. That's what it is. I knew right away it was a false flag operation. I'm 50 years old. I've been studying conspiracy theory for over 30 years. So I know there's something to it. I can see the hallmarks of it over and over and over again. It was obvious to me from day one. So in the five years uh, since uh, these attacks, obviously there's a lot of opinion in this country about what happened and a lot of uh, public product that uh, even these days usually around the event that we watch and see. Has it been difficult for you to uh, sort of hold these opinions? Uh, do you make sort of an effort to teach or convince others about them? And do you think that the numbers of people who are skeptical are growing? Um, I've been an activist since I was a child, so I've never been afraid to say what I think. And I was speaking out from day one, and I was called the most horrible things and excoriated by people who now have been saying to me, you know, I'm beginning to think you were right. Yes, I talk about it all the time. Just a few weeks ago, I was on vacation in Jamaica, and I was at a spa with some other New Yorkers. Intelligent, educated people, but people who get a lot of their news from mainstream media, not people like myself who spend two to four hours a day reading from alternative sources. And when I said to these people, look, certain things about it just don't add up. Jet fuel doesn't burn hot enough to melt steel. There were traces of thermite found. Thermite is can only be obtained by military contractors. Civilian contractors and firefighters cannot get their hands on it. It was clearly a controlled demolition. Several firefighters said that they heard explosions. They reported that the fire was out on the 87th floor of the World Trade Tower, and then they heard the explosions. This was suppressed. These firefighters were not allowed to testify at the 9-11 uh, cover-up commission here, the Kane Commission, which, of course, if you look closely at the credentials of all of the people on the commission, every one of them had ties to the defense and or oil industries. The scale of that uh, is big. Are we talking about 50, 100 people at the highest levels of government who may have been in the know on this? I don't know how many there were, but I'd certainly love to know why the SEC dropped their investigations as to the suspicious numbers of puts and calls on airlines and various other and oil industries. and. That, that when they discovered that it was not foreigners who placed those trades, all of a sudden it was a non-story. I bet you would find that it goes back to the CIA. The evidence is very interesting, certainly now, five years into this. Enough people have been meeting like this to uh, bring up some very specific points about physical evidence, as you pointed out, as well as uh, some of these sort of circumstantial evidence that you're also describing. As a New Yorker, uh, I'm, you can tell us whether or not you've signed the petition, but maybe you could just speak, speak more directly to uh, Elliot Spitzer and the DA's office. Uh, what would you say to them with this stack of what you see as evidence? Um, what would you ask of them in this regard? Well, this is a crime. It was clearly a crime, and it's a crime where the evidence was covered up. I mean, when Flight 800 happened, the government spent $40 million looking at every piece of that airplane. but. And 9-11 happened, Rudolph Giuliani ordered all of the steel infrastructure from the Trade Center shipped overseas, melted down and shipped overseas. That's a cover-up. That's a cover-up of evidence. Clearly, something does not add up to any thinking person. But do you think we can convince our local authorities, like our DAs and, uh, no. and prosecutors, to take, it, take this seriously? Or? No, they're all part of it. So how do you, how do you go about what is next? How, what do you prioritize as a member of this movement in order to affect some justice or change? Well, we have to keep speaking about it. We have to keep talking about it. We have to keep assembling in groups. One of the speakers here today, a, a lawyer by the name of William Pepper, said what we need to do is go down and camp out in front of the Washington Monument and just camp out like Cindy Sheehan camped out in Crawford and let them know we're not going away until we get some answers. Lydia Vasquez, who's from this neighborhood, has committed to introducing um, uh, legislation in Congress to call for an independent commission investigating it, a commission with no ties to the government. And um, other people, other speakers in this room were calling for a commission to be composed of not only experts, but 
people, because there were no scientific experts on the Kane Commission, real scientific experts, people with knowledge of physics and mechanical engineering and materials, but also for some of the families, because really it was the, the families of the victims who've been most instrumental in pushing for the truth to come out, because they know that it, the evidence didn't add up, and they want the truth, and we should all support them in that to honor the dead. What better way to honor the dead than to bring out the truth of how and why they died? Because it's a number one rule of police work that the number one suspect for any crime are the people who had the most to benefit from it. On September 10th, George Bush had less than 40% of support among world leaders. Okay, what happened on September 11th? Yeah, my name is Scott Sen. I'm from uh, just west of Atlantic City, New Jersey, South Jersey. And uh, where were you on the morning of September 11th? I was at my place of business. I was watching it while I ran up to my apartment and I saw it on TV. Yeah. And uh, you're an attendee to this conference today? Yes, yes I am. Proudly. Tell us a little bit about uh, what you wanted to speak about as physical evidence. Yeah, well, that's what, well, first what got me on that day was the fact that no fighters intercepted any of these planes. I mean, the second plane hit the South Tower at 9.03. So even if you give the first plane pilot error, say, quarter of nine, at 9.03 we were definitely under a terrorist attack. And yet, 45 minutes later, the strategic military command of the country is hit, you see? And so that makes no sense. That's what tipped me off that there had to be some sort of a stand down order. And then, of course, there's Building 7 that I got hip to, no thanks to the mainstream media though, and no thanks to the 9-11 Commission report, by the way, that did not even mention Building 7 in its final report, as if the inexplicable implosion of a 500-foot office building was not even worth mentioning in the official comprehensive account of that day. So you were skeptical from the very beginning and your skepticism has been reinforced, would you say that? Oh yeah, well beyond the shadow of a doubt, the physical evidence is physical evidence. Let's take the tower, say, say the North Tower. The government says that the steel gave way, the top part of the tower fell into the bottom and then it pancaked down. That's, the, that's what they say happened. But that's impossible. The main point is that each tower and Building 7 fell at free fall speed you see, and that's known, it's accepted, even the 9-11 Commission has said that both buildings fell in roughly 10 seconds. Now, but that's free fall speed. So in other words, sir, if you were to take a super helicopter and pull that 200 foot section of that top building up to 12,000 feet with a helicopter and let it go, it would fall to the ground through the air in 10 seconds. But it didn't fall through the ground. It fell into the bottom part of the building, which is much heavier, which was a thousand feet, very healthy. So my question is, to anybody, how does the top part of the building fall through the bottom part of the building at the speed of falling through air? The bottom part of the building was not air, you see. So what happened to the resistance? It was taken out. It's classic controlled demolition classic controlled demolition. Okay, let's take a look at this uh, from a more practical viewpoint in terms of the politics then. Let's say you look at that and you say, well, that means there were, as Dr. Jones may have just presented, cutter charges in the building and someone must have placed them there in order for this to happen. Uh, the scale of this, given the government line for the last five years and how many people walk around you in the world believing one thing about what happened here in this town five years ago is pretty immense. Uh, how have you felt in this five years, and how does it make you feel now? Do you think it's really possible to bring people to an understanding of this, uh, create an investigation, and achieve change around this issue of September 11th? I believe that there is, and I believe it's because the physical evidence speaks for itself. That's what's going to carry this, and that's what's gotten me and is what's woken up a lot of people to this, is just the raw physical evidence involved. And then you take that to the next level and you see well there has to be more going on. I don't quite know what's going to happen. Maybe maybe the conspirators will get scared and maybe they'll maybe they'll try some other false flag operation to get everybody's mind off of what happened. I don't think that's possible because too many people are hip to this now. So, I mean, we're approaching 40% of the country. Like the Time Magazine article said, that's no small number. That, that this is a political, mainstream political reality right now. So I think that uh, the people that pulled off 9-11 would have to take that mood of the public into consideration. You know, they've lost their grip. They've lost their, 
you know, uh, their, 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 their mesmerizing grip that they've had on at least 40% of the country. But again, it comes down to the physical evidence. If you take an honest, non-emotional look at the physical evidence, it's very, very clear that the buildings came down, all three buildings came down from controlled demolition. And then you can get into the Pentagon too, and that's another story. So that, that's where I stand, that's what got me into the movement, and that's, that's why I'm really proud to be here. Well, there's no question that the massive evidence that's been put together regarding the hand of the authorities in the creation of the events of 9-11 has uh, engaged uh, thousands upon thousands of people in active work. Uh, the polls tell us that uh, something in the order of 35% um, 30, of the public actually considers that the United States authorities sponsored the events of 9-11. And perhaps double that number thinks that uh, the authorities' official version is not to be accepted, although they haven't reached the conclusion as to who actually was responsible. But that's an extraordinary development over a space of five years. And it does reflect the fact that the vast majority of the population in this country are deeply alienated from that 1% of the population that owns and controls 95% of the national wealth. And events like 9-11, when great crimes are visited upon the public and the authorities utilize those to create conditions of mass repression and all of that with a background of an unrelenting assault upon people's living standards, upon the social services for which they'd struggled for over a hundred years. The eight-hour day is a thing of the past. Health care is on the line continuously. The pensions are being scrapped. Jobs are shipped out everywhere in a mad race to the bottom as they seek to sweatshop the nature of labor in our society. The largest form of work now is part-time work. No security in that work, let alone health care or retirement or pensions or what have you. So people are profoundly affected by the fact that they are under siege. And then when on top of that, the whole infrastructure of the society is cannibalized to sustain permanent war, when literally trillions of dollars are siphoned off for this purpose, while living standards are slashed and all social services are eliminated, when you have one out of four in poverty in the United States, when there's a higher infant mortality rate in Harlem than in Bangladesh, this creates a climate in which the ability to reach people with the truth about such events as 9-11, the treason at the top, has the potential to galvanize a movement for fundamental change. But what has to begin, and, that, and I was really coming back to the uh, opportunity that a movement like the 9-11 movement has, what has to begin is a mobilizing of our people in their own name to challenge for power this handful of people. We cannot change the people who are at power in the United States. They own both political parties. They finance both political parties. It's a millionaire's club. It's one big property party with two names. In the last election, the main fundraiser for Bush was the president of Citibank. The principal fundraiser for Kerry was the vice president of Citibank. It's one millionaire's club that divide themselves into two parties funded and controlled by the same corporate and banking establishment. There's no political expression for the mass of our people. That's what we have to create. We need a party, a political organization based upon working people, based upon the trade union movement, the rank and file of the trade union movement and the community at large, that it addresses this crisis in political terms. We have to put forward a program for the control over the means of production in the hands of those who produce all value, working people in the United States. The meaning, the only concrete meaning of democratic control is control over the economic life of the United States because the political superstructure is but an expression of that. It's nothing more than that. So 9-11, which is exposing treason at the top, which is demonstrating that the population is the target that the, the ruling class is waging war against our people, that the attacks of 9-11 were an inside job, a false flag operation, which was designed to create a hysteria and a numbed acquiescence in permanent war. 
and in measures of profound repression from the Patriot Act to the militarization of the police to the plans for imposing martial law. This is part of the class war against our population. The truth about 9-11, the truth about the class war waged against our population, the truth about the visiting upon our population of terrible uh, biological agents. They're constantly ascribing this to demonic others when they are the authors, just as they were with respect to 9-11. This reality has to be conjoined to a social and political program for fundamental change. Because as I continually try to say, we can't change these people. We cannot influence these people. We can't reform them and we can't contain them. We have to overthrow them. Well, I mean, if you say revolution to the average college kid in America, they think, oh, you know, I got Bob Marley on my wall. You know, I got a picture of Che. That's revolution. Everybody takes that word very differently. You ask someone in Central America what revolution means, that means that if they sit in support of uh, socialist guerrillas, that the military is going to come kill them. But if they support the government themselves, that the guerrillas are going to come kill them. It's a no-win situation for people on the bottom. Not everybody associates revolution with the most positive thing in the world. Um, but if we're talking about where how revolution really starts, which is a revolution of the mind where people have uh, an independent opinion about some, I think that's something that we can definitely start today. I do it by working with the Hip Hop Union where we organize health care for the artists, which is something that not even the major labels have. So we can at least expose one tiny fragment of the world that they live in. You know what I mean? So if you can expose one tiny thing about the elements of society that you think are 100% factual to be a lie, it makes people question things. We're trying to expose one gigantic thing that's come constantly bombarded on the public, which is the government story of 9-11, to be false. That's a very big thing to do. So, question is, you, were you skeptical from the very first moment? At first, when I started hearing the government stories about, and, and their links with uh, terrorist organizations in the past, which I knew well of, then I began to question it. When I started hearing excuses about why we had given the Taliban money in the past, that's when I knew what they were just saying was blatantly a lie. Because they were talking about they wanted to uh, decrease the heroin, they were giving the money to, to, to destroy the heroin trade, and then subsequently, right after the invasion of Afghanistan, the Northern Alliance assumes control of certain areas where poppy production uh, has stopped, and then it goes right back into production. So. The primary military counterpart in the campaign against the Taliban, which is America's ally, inherits the heroin trade, not just for Afghanistan, but for the entire region. You're not trying to stop drugs. You didn't give them the money to stop drugs. You don't care about democracy. You care about stabilizing it so that the corporate economy can keep on moving. It doesn't matter whether you call yourself a communist, whether you call yourself a capitalist or whatever. If you're in line with the money makers, you're, you're down with the system. You know, I, I guess where I was going that with is, is uh, can we demilitarize the USA? Can we put an end to this black ops stuff through knowledge? Is it really possible for us as a people, you know, we were talking about revolution a minute ago. Okay, well, let's step back from revolution as a kind of abstract term. Is it really possible for us to attack these, uh, these despots who control this most powerful military in the world and use it to do such? Uh, I think a lot of it is not a question of confronting, but a lot of it you're going to see is going to implode. That's the nature of it. You know, now more than ever, more uh, private corporations have a wing of military ops, what we call contractors. That's what they like to call them, even though they don't build nothing. When you hear the word contractor, you think, oh, there's going to be some sort of architectural structure here. It doesn't mean that. It's just a nice word to call someone who's a mercenary who kills for money. As more and more of these corporations have conflicting interests in other countries, you're going to see a rise of that type of conflict between larger corporations that'll say no this is my area this is my place you know the world isn't big enough that's that's the fault of capitalism the world isn't big enough you know what I mean yeah. <laughs> there's always there's always gonna be some new part of it and the other the other fault of it is that it advances not to where the people need it to be but to where the corporate gain and the the, 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 the profit margin needs it to be it doesn't advance for the for the movement of the people, you know. In the same way, it's never criticized for that. It, it's only criticized for the administration it has. In an, in an opposite manner where any socialist or communist system, when there's a flaw in it, we criticize the actual ideology rather than the people who are running the system. You know, we have dozens and dozens of dictators and, and brutal individuals that have a quote-unquote capitalist system out there in Latin America or the Middle East. But since they fit into it, you know, we don't question the failure of their government based upon what economic system they have. 
but rather upon them. Whereas if we have the failure of a socialist or quasi-socialist state, immediately the failure is placed upon the economic system, you know what I mean, rather yeah. than the individual and their specific policy. Yeah, and how about indoctrination coming from the churches, the schools, and the movie houses? How do you as a producer in the middle of this kind of go at that indoctrination and try to dismantle it? It's a tall order. I mean, they, they got... They have do you a, take they that have, responsibility? They have, a, they, have a, they have a monopoly on a lot of it, and I, I don't know if I can necessarily combat all of it, but I tell people that, look, if black and Latino people and people in general are conditioned or they're... they're colonized mentally or physically in so many different ways, then you can't expect one avenue to be the path to liberation. You can't just say, oh, it's all about hip hop and we're going to get free through there. It's all about socialism or it's all about this economic feed or it's all about military. It's all about educating the people. It's all about finding the spiritualism inside religion rather than the false doctrine of religion itself. It has to be a combination of all these things. The problem is that sometimes movements just fight on one front rather than realize they're being attacked on seven fronts by I think the highest priority at this moment in time is to kick everybody out um, based on their voting record and out of the Senate and out of Congress who hasn't been doing their job if you voted for the Patriot Act boom you're gone you know if you <laughs> like I, I'm sorry fired you know um, all of those senators fired you know I, I there are only a handful of people who have been doing their job for the last six years. And the rest of them have been bending over backwards um, for this administration. And they have to know. If I know what's going on, they have to know what's going on. And they're lying to us all. So the first step is really for people to go out there and vote and, and, and vote. Uh, and get informed about who they're voting for and not buy into this right-left um, paradigm that, uh, that doesn't exist, you know, this right-left fight that, that, is, that is fake. And, and vote on the issues and vote for the people that, ha that have a good voting record themselves. And, you know, and, it, and, if they, and if they steal this election again, then we have to hit the streets, you know? Away. Gina Turley and I'm from Los Angeles and I was in Los Angeles actually in bed because you know it was like 5.30 for us and um, my dad happened to be in town and he ran into my room and woke me up because he couldn't believe that a plane had just hit the World Trade Tower and we actually watched the second one hit and I work in a hospital so I actually had to go into work that day um, and yeah it was just just it was such a traumatic day that I don't I don't know how anyone could not be interested this this much later and we got into the truth movement like she said on the internet and I was actually the slowest one to come around to the concept because I have an international relations degree and I gave a serious look at the CIA after school and um, a lot of you know a lot of my experience and education is pretty establishment and so a lot of this is really hard for me to stomach but that actually you know all you have to do is look at a picture of the Pentagon there's not a plane there, and if they're willing to lie about that, then what else is there? And so that's why I'm here. And today, did you uh, have that feeling again, that feeling of confrontation, hearing some... I feel like confrontation all over the place. I, I feel confrontation wearing this shirt. I feel it's really conflicting to have your whole life be told one direction in one way, and then one day you wake up and some planes get flown into some buildings, and literally the world changes. And it really has definitely um, changed my outlook on where we're headed and we, we need to do something quick. My name is L.T. Smith, I'm from Brooklyn. And uh, were you here uh, on September 11th of 2001? Yes, I was in New York City, right. Uh, were you skeptical in the initial days? Did you become skeptical as time passed? And maybe you could tell us a little bit about uh, your feelings about who might have uh, brought this upon us. No, I've never really uh, needed to be proven that, uh, you know, government was behind it. It, it, it. it really doesn't matter whether they were directly or indirectly one way or the other. It just shows the extent to which they have been oppressing and uh, committing genocide against people throughout the world, not just in uh, the Middle East, but in uh, Latin America, South America. So it's not just the people in the Middle East who are suspicious and uh, hate the United States government. I think it's most of the people in the world. And for those people who are aware, those people who have uh, tried to stay conscious, 
I don't think it's a question of whether or not, as far as I can see, that actually, even though there are many victims, there are no innocent victims. Because if you work for uh, companies that are exploiting people around the world, it behooves you to know and find out what, what you're associated with. And uh, do you think that uh, now, five years down the road, that um, there are more people who are growing interested in investigating this, like these skeptics are calling for, uh, because of the possibility of complicity by the United States government? Or do you think that more of your fellow New Yorkers and people kind of just want it to go away, they don't want to pay attention to it? Uh, which of these two would you say? Or I think there's a good percentage of people on, in both camps. But I think that more and more people are finding out the tr truth even in spite of themselves. Uh, there's just more information, there's more independent uh, research and, and studies and uh, people have access to it. So I think more and more people are becoming aware. I think the biggest question is, especially for the government, is how many more times the American people going to allow themselves to be lied to so that the government and its uh, affiliates can continue to make the same mistakes that are detrimental to the people of, of the world, really. And uh, do you teach these kinds of things as well as a teacher? And have you had anybody hassle you about that or had any problems with uh, your view being presented to, to others in this, uh, in this city or in this country? Not yet. You know, not yet. We don't know what tomorrow may hold. Uh, however, you know, I, I, like I say, I teach math. And uh, math is about interrelationships between objects and things, people, places and things. And uh, I always try to integrate that into, uh, you know, the context of which I teach. I can't teach in a vacuum. It doesn't make any difference whether people know mathematics or whether they're trained very well to be uh, just uh, caught in, in, in the wheel, so to speak. Uh, so I try to uh, at least give my students some appreciation of mathematics and appreciation of the world in which they live so that they can become more, uh, uh, I would say, uh, powerful citizens. So that they can, uh, you know, because actually it's all about control. I think the key thing is control. People have lost control of their government, people have lost control of their lives, so it's just a matter about uh, uh, associating locally uh, as far as starting with yourself, taking control, taking control of your own life and taking control of the people who make policy. And do you have hope that uh, the United States or people living in the United States will do this and that uh, and we could see some change in the future? Well, I think it's an indication of that right now. You know, again, it's becoming more and more difficult for uh, uh, people who have the wool pulled over their eyes by the uh, media, you know, by the uh, uh, government, uh, just by people that are working on behalf of the government. We find out now that the government is controlling more of our news services. They're paying people to, to project certain images into our minds. Yes, I think things will come to a head. And uh, in fact, I look forward to it. In fact, that's the only way you're going to have a uh, real change. Uh, sometimes, you know, you hope for, that the change will be positive and that people uh, will be able to get, live better lives. But again, that doesn't always happen. So it's really about people taking control of themselves and controlling those who say they represent people. I wanted to first get uh, from you an impression, say, from September 11th, five years ago to today, about that growth. Has it been growing a great deal? And have you seen people... Uh, getting hip and uh, this tipping point that people talk about, uh, do you see it impending? Well, I do, and it's exponentially growing. The people have found out that the official story is a lie, and I've just seen explosive growth the last year, and every month it's, it's exponentially speeding up. So there is an epiphany or a, a paradigm shift happening right now with people learning the truth about 9-11. But also to look at power in a new way. Do you think Americans, as a result of doing this with the 9-11 topic, could actually, do you see any hope for the United States getting back what it once had and, and, and real kind of leadership, meaningful leadership? It wasn't America that did this. It was criminals using the United States as an engine of domination. And so the world will look on us good and we will get the love of the world back if we stop being a corrupt empire and we admit that criminals had seized control of us and remove them. You know, Germany today is a good country. At least it was better than it was under Hitler. But we don't entirely blame the Germans for Hitler. And we're trying to stop Bush and his cronies before it gets to Hitlerian proportions. Uh, what do you think is the priority for this movement uh, taking it to the next uh, sort of level? My continual path is to wake people up. We have the majority of Americans, 68% in the Zogby poll, do not trust the government, believe there's a cover-up. 
42% uh, of that same Zobby poll believing it's a pure inside job. Scripps Howard News Service, 36% believe it's an inside job. And a lot of people get a poll call. They're not going to say, I believe the government did it, even if they thought it did. We, you know, we've experienced that talking to people on the street, but later they'll tell you when the camera's off, they think it is. So the real numbers, I believe, are about double that. Also done thousands of radio interviews around the country, found that the majority of people are awake. It's much higher than 50% now, uh, but the polls also bear that out. But I believe our job is not done yet. Just simply exposing it, having the people realize it, then shifts their paradigm and gets them out of fear of some phony Al-Qaeda into the fear of who they should be fearing, the real people, criminals in our government, so we can then wake up and take action against them. But uh, I, I would like to bring them to justice, and I believe we can bring them to justice. But it's like getting Al Capone on tax evasion. If we can get them on no-bid contracts, we can get them on lying about Iraq, or we can get them about lying to Congress, or get them on some other issue and just get them out of there, I will take that as well. Because it's so hard, even if people know it's an inside job, it's so hard for the country itself and the world itself to move and then remove and then you know, actually remove these criminals from the system. So, but we are working towards that and it, that could happen. But most certainly we can expose them publicly in public opinion uh, to where uh, they are, are just unable to govern and are removed. Who do you look to in America for leadership at a time like this? People always talk about speaking truth to power. And then that's important, to let them know we're aware of their criminal activities. But more than that, we need to speak truth to the people and empower the people to take action with our buying habits, with who we support, with who we talk to. If we, Here's an example. Two years ago, the police down there were pretty mean to me. This year, most of the police were nodding and saying, good job, and hey, Alex, like what you do. I mean, high-level ones with you know, captains and people, when they saw the cameras turn away, they go, hey, I'm a big fan. You know, appreciate what you're doing. It happened over and over again today. Wow, in New York. Yeah, so, so there's a shift with those guys, too. Do you take this as a duty, what you do? do you, what, what motivates you in this process that, to be so committed? Well, have you ever been in a fist fight back in high school? Once the fight starts, you're not really thinking about it. I'm committed to this. I'm going 100%. I'm not even thinking about winning. I know we're going to win if we just fight hard enough. We don't have a choice. I mean, these are really diabolical people in control. So I would feel more insecure not fighting them. And uh, I value my life. I love life. Uh, but if they, if they knock me down, if they crush me, that's the way it is. You know, that's, that's why we have what we have. We, we owe the debt to people who came before us who made sacrifices. So I'm just trying to follow in that tradition of being a human being. I don't even call it courage. It's I see evil people. They must be resisted. I am resisting them. And we are here at Cooper Union on this Sunday, the 10th of September 2006, uh, just a few hours away from the fifth anniversary of that fateful morning here in New York and in Point South and North, Boston Logan Airport, Washington, D.C., and, of course, somewhere over Shanksville, Pennsylvania, where these attack events took place in the United States five years ago. And tonight, here at Cooper Union, all day and all evening for the last six or seven hours, the 9-11 Truth community, represented by a number of speakers and attendees, have been meeting here to discuss independent investigation, alternative theories about what happened on that fateful Tuesday morning. Tomorrow morning, many people from here are expecting to go down to Ground Zero, the former World Trade Center site, and wearing black t-shirts with white writing that read, Investigate 9-11. They are going to encourage people who are at Ground Zero to reconsider the evidence that there may have been other authors of this event, not Osama bin Laden, not Al-Qaeda, or perhaps maybe those agents uh, working in complicity with members of the United States government, of the Mossad, Israeli intelligence, or other agencies which have not been mentioned, not covered, and certainly not investigated by the 9-11 Commission. From Cooper Union, I am M.T. Karthik for Manhattan Neighborhood Network.